So I've put out a bunch of content over the last month or so about Android and automating games, and I have some future content planned. And one of the most common questions I got from those videos were, how are you mirroring your screen? How do I get ADB? How do I make it work? How are you using ADB through Python and a bunch of other stuff? So I'm going to answer all those questions in this one video. So let's get started. So the first step to making all this work is you have to enable USB debugging on your phone. And to do that, you have to access the secret screen within Android called Developer Options. Some of you may already have this enabled, but many of you don't. So to do it, what you're going to want to do is go into the settings of your phone. You want to scroll down to the About section of your phone. And this is going to be different depending on what kind of phone you have. This one's a OnePlus 5. So, but really what you're looking for is this build number here. And then when you find the build number, you want to hit it repeatedly about five or six times. Now in my case, because I haven't enabled already, it says no need your ARIA developer. But if I didn't, it would say, you know, congratulations, you've unlocked the developer tools. Once you've done that, go back to the main settings page and look around for developer tools. Mine happen to be under system. At the very bottom, it says developer options. Once you're here, scroll down a little bit until you get to a section called debugging. And then the very first option is going to be USB debugging. And then once you're here, click on the toggle to enable it. So at this point, you've made it possible for, for your phone to accept ADB commands, but you don't actually have ADB yet. So step two is going to be get the Android platform tools. I'll put this link in the description, but it's also on the screen here, and it'll also be in the GitHub repo. And then once you go to this page, you'll be able to download it. Once you're on this page, scroll down a little bit till you get to downloads. If you're on Windows or Mac, click the appropriate link and then install whatever downloads. In this case, I'm on Linux, so I'm going to click the Linux one. I agree. I'll click download and then it will download it to my home folder. Once you've done that, you can close your browser. You don't need anything further there. Another option for Linux is to check your distro specific package repository and see if ADB and the rest of the platform tools exist there. In my case, I was able to just do apt install ADB. But you don't need to do that. You can download it right from the site I gave you. And then once you extract into platform tools here, you can look inside here and you can see all the commands, ADB, etc. So now that we have USB debugging on and we have the tools ready, our next step is going to be to get the server running and make sure that we have a proper connection to our phone. For this, run the ADB command with the argument devices. If you're on Windows, you'll probably do adb.exe. If you're on Mac, you might just do adb. It just depends. Now, as soon as you run this, you want to look on your phone because it's probably going to be a little screen there. It's going to say a request is coming in from this computer. Do you trust it to access your phone? And you'll want to click allow. As far as the output from this program, what you're looking for is you're looking for a number and the word device. You may see a bunch of other things. You might see a number and you may see no permissions. If you see that, it just means that the phone has not allowed the computer access to it yet. So like if there's an error requesting the permissions or if you were to click deny, then that would say no permissions and you wouldn't be able to use it. If you see something other than device, just go ahead and unplug your phone and then plug it back in. Now at this point you're done and you're actually able to be able to send commands to your phone. Now keep in mind that the ADB server is indeed a server. So there's a couple ways you can send things to your phone. You can use ADB directly, that'll send the commands over, but you can also use something else like say Python and you can send commands on the proper port which will be forwarded through ADB to the phone. So like right now, if I wanted to send a swipe event on the phone, I could do ADB shell input touch screen swipe say from 500 to 500 up to 500 by a thousand over say two seconds i'm going to hit enter you can see it does a little scrolling action on the phone something else you can do now is just adb shell with no additional arguments what this will do is it'll actually lock you into the phone this is kind of like sshing into a cloud server but instead it's your phone so you can see the typical linux file system that's on the phone itself now there's not a ton that you can do because your current user is shell and shell can really do nothing. This is where the whole concept of rooting your phone comes in. If you root your phone, then you can actually get root access to your phone as if it's just another Linux machine. But nevertheless, you can still browse around a little bit. There's just not a whole lot of cool stuff you can do. Now the last tool we're gonna look at is screen copy. And screen copy is what allows me to do what you see over here. What you're actually seeing here is a physical phone that I'm mirroring to my computer. This is not an emulator. So I'm gonna hold the actual phone here. This is the phone that I'm actually mirroring. So you can see that as I'm scrolling, it's also scrolling on the one in my hand. And this has uses outside of development. It's not just you know the ability to say automate things or whatnot. You could also use this if you wanted to just use your phone with your mouse and your keyboard. And the reverse is also true. If I want to use my finger and scroll on the phone, you can see that it also moves it on my screen. To get screen copy, you can either grab the link from the description or on the screen or from the GitHub repo, but in any case, you'll end up on the GitHub page for that. Now this supports Windows, Mac OS, Linux, supports everything. So just scroll down until you get to the download section. 
Now for most major Linux distributions, there is a package called screen copy available. You can grab it that way. Otherwise you can download the source and compile it yourself. That's entirely up to you. If you're on Windows, they've made a zip file for you to download and install. And if you're on Mac OS, you can get it via brew or you can build it manually just like you could on Linux. Once you have it installed and everything's good, running screen copy is actually extraordinarily easy. Literally all you do is you type screen copy and hit enter. Of course, they have much more options besides that, but this will work for 95% of the people, I would say. And that's really all there is to it. You now have the same tools that I have. It's the same stuff that I've used in all my previous videos with Android automation for games. One important note I want to make is if you're an actual Android developer making Android apps, I would highly advise you don't get A to B this way. I would advise that you get it through Android Studio. And this is for two reasons. Number one, it'll be updated to the latest automatically. And number two, there will never be any ambiguities as to which ADB Android Studio should use versus the one that you're using here. This is mostly for people who wanna control their phone from their computer or get a mirror of their phone on their computer and have no real desire to build any Android apps. If you have any questions at all about anything you saw in this video, please be sure to leave them below in the comments. And other than that, hope to see you in the next video. Take care.